So uh, in the previous video, we talked about the transfer function. So now, so now we go back into uh, solving uh, systems of differential equations. Now, when solving a system of differential equations, basically, uh, we always uh, do the exact same process. So no matter what the differential equation is, the process remains the same. What changes is the partial fraction ex uh, expansion based on the different types of poles uh, that we are going to meet. So, you know, there are many different situations. So we may have uh, real poles, we may have real poles with multiplicity, or we may have complex poles, okay? And of course, the fourth situation is complex poles with multiplicity. So basically, there are four basic uh, situations that might occur. But we actually only cover the three ones, uh, or the three first, because the, third, the fourth is very unlikely to occur. So uh, we are going to begin by solving uh, various examples. And in these examples, we are going to see all of these situations uh, one by one. Okay. So I'm going to start with an example of a differential equation. Uh, let me write it down right here. Okay, so we have x double dot of t, all right, plus, uh, all right, okay, four times y dot of t plus three times y of t, and this is equal to zero. Okay, so in my first example, we are going to solve a system for free response. Okay, so we don't have any input. And here we assume that the initial condition at time zero is one and the derivative of time zero is zero. Okay, so this is our system. Okay, so we are trying to solve and find the free response. Nice. So what uh, are we going to do now? We're gonna take the Laplace transform. Okay, but now we don't have a zero initial conditions. So I'm going to keep all of the terms. So we have S squared Y of S minus S Y zero times zero minus y dot at time zero, which is of course zero. Plus four times s y s, since we have a first derivative, minus y zero, nice. Plus we have this term, so we have uh, three times y of s, and this is equal uh, to zero. Okay, nice. So what are we going to do here? We are going to factor the common terms for y. So here we obtain the so-called characteristic polynomial of the differential equation, 4 over s plus 3, all of this multiplied by ys. And here we have this term, which is 1. This term is also uh, 1. OK, so we move them to the right side, and we are going to get an s plus 1, right? And I'm sorry, no, it's not S plus 1. It is S plus, this is a multiplication. So it is an S plus uh, 4. Great. So now uh, let's obtain this formula uh, by taking this coefficient on the right part. We are going to obtain an expression for the differential, uh, I'm sorry, for the Laplace transform of Yx. So it's S plus 4 over S squared plus or s plus 3. Nice. So this is all good, right? But of course, uh, what do we end up with? We end up with this expression where we don't know it's Laplace transform, right? But as we discussed earlier, uh, no matter the fact that we don't know the exact uh, formula for this expression, we can break it down into individual fractions. And in order to do that, I only need to find uh, the roots of the polynomial in the denominator. So I Complete compute the determinant. I'm not sure, not the determinant. How is it called in English? I'm not sure in Greek it's the the acronym. So, but in English, how is it called? I'm sorry, I cannot remember right now. So it's uh, a squared. All right, minus twelve. This gives us a four, and then the roots are minus four plus minus two over two. So the solutions are. Uh, minus 6 over 2, which gives 3. And the second is minus 2 over 2, which gives us a minus 1. Okay, so these are the two roots uh, of the polynomial. And this means that this equation can be broken down. All right. Okay, let me write it analytically first. So this is s plus 1 multiplied by s plus uh, 
plus 3. And this can be broken down into alpha times s plus 1 plus beta over s plus 3. Right. Nice. So now what we only uh, need to do is find the coefficients a and b. Now, if you are desperate, you can put this uh, so-called hats over here and make uh, and combine the two fractions. But as I told you in a previous video, we can easily compute the coefficients using a simple formula or the limit of a and b. Uh, the formula is this one. It's the limit as s goes to minus 1 of this fraction. So it's s plus 1. We include this term right here. So it's s plus 4 over s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 3. So we obtain minus 1 plus 4. So we obtain um, 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. So we obtain 3 over 2. Okay. And then for beta, so let's come here. Beta is equal to the limit as s goes to mean minus 3, s plus 3 over um, s plus 4, s plus 1 times s plus 3. This gets removed and we have minus 3 plus 4 and then we have minus 3 plus uh, 1. Okay, so it's minus 1 over 2. Right. So this is it. We found both coefficients uh, for each fraction, right? So now what we need to do is simply take the inverse Laplace transform in this equation. So, so let's block this. And here we obtain this expression right here. Uh -huh. Let me write it down a bit more clearly. Okay. So we have that ys is equal to um, 3 over 2 s plus 1 minus 1 second 1 over s plus uh, 3. And now we only need to take the inverse Laplace transform to obtain the solution of the system. Because although we didn't know the Laplace transform of this one, we do know the Laplace transform of these individual terms. So we have... 3 over 2 of exponential of minus stuff multiplied by the step input 1 minus 1 over 2 over epsilon to the minus 3t of u of t. Right. So this is it. We solved the differential equation, right? So what did we obtain in the solution? My apologies. Uh, we obtain two individual terms. Of course, if we replace at time 0, we will obtain at time zero, three seconds minus one second, one over two, I mean, I'm sorry. So we will obtain two over two, which is one, right? So this is correct because the exercise told us that at time zero, the system started from the position of one and we found the exact same thing, right? So obviously, if you found something different here, we would have made a mistake in our uh, calculations. So. The solution is very, very easy to plot. I'm sorry for a trembling hand. The system starts from 1 at time 0. And then uh, what do we have here? We have two individual terms, and both of them have this exponential with a negative value. So both of these terms go to 0. So the solution of this system is going to be a trajectory that uh, slowly but surely goes to 0 and remains there. I'm sorry for my trembling hand. So this is it, right? And this is the solution of the system. Simple as that. Starts from one, goes to zero, doesn't have any oscillation. So this is the first example that we solved. Okay, and this is a free response. We solved a similar one in a previous video. Now let's come again here and solve the exact same problem. But now let's say we have. All right, let's say we have an input now. So we have double dot of y plus 4 y dot y of t. Now, this is equal to u of t. So we have an input. And the system starts from zero initial conditions. 
but u here is a step response. No response, I'm sorry. It's a step input. Okay, so the output is going to be called the step response, okay. So here we have the forced response of the system, but the solution is exactly, uh, you know, the process of solving the system is exactly the same. So we take the Laplace transform, and now we have zero initial conditions. So I can ignore all of the terms that involve initial conditions. So we have S squared plus four times SYS plus three times YS. This is equal to U of S. Nice. Uh, so let's factor everything together. And this is equal to uh, U of S. Nice. And now, first of all, let's obtain the transfer function. Remember, the transfer function is an ex expression between the input, uh, the output over the Laplace of the input. Okay, and I can easily obtain it from this formula right here. This is one over s squared plus four s plus three. Okay, so this is the transfer function of the system. Okay, we could equivalent, uh, the, you know, the exercise could equivalently have given us simply the transfer function instead of giving us the differential equation. And remember, you should be able to go back and forth between the transfer function and the differential equation. So it, you should uh, be able to look at the differential equation and immediately understand what the transfer function is. Okay, so this is it for the transfer function. And now uh, let us begin by solving the system. So we go right here. We obtain an expression for, or actually we're gonna go from this case right here, which is exact same thing. We can write that the output is G of S multiplied by, no, sorry. So I don't like that. Okay, so it's G of S multiplied by U of S. And this gives us, this formula right here, it's one over s squared plus four s plus three multiplied by the input, one over s, right? So this gives us over s times s plus one times s plus three, okay? Because the denominator is exactly the same as before. And now I can break this down into individual fractions, again, similarly to what I did uh, earlier. So a over s plus s, s plus one, plus c over s plus three. So this is it, right? So what do I do differently from before? Well, nothing actually, okay? I simply computed the transfer function first, and then I you know, did the multiplication, ys is equal to this multiplication right here, gs, which is the transfer function, times the Laplace transform of the input. So now I only need to compute these three fractions, right? So again, Let's see what happens. Similarly to the previous case, we have the limit as goes to zero of S multiplied by, I'm going to include this whole fraction right here. All right, sorry for making a mess. One over S plus one, S plus three. All right, so now we have uh, one third. Okay, is to compute. For B, we have the limit as s goes to minus one of s plus one times one over s times s plus one times s plus three is of minus one of minus one. Okay, so it is equal to minus one over two. See, we have the limit s goes to minus three s plus three s times s plus one three this goes away and we have one over minus three multiplied by minus three plus one okay so we have minus three plus one is minus two multiplied by minus three so this is positive one over six okay so we found all of our fractions correctly. Nice, okay.
So do we need to do anything else here? Well, basically, uh, yes, we need to complete the solution of the system, but the fraction is complete. Okay, so let's move a bit below and see what happens. Our fraction now is this. Okay. A is one third, so we have one third over one S plus S plus one is uh, minus one second over one over S plus one plus one sixth multiplied by one over S plus three, right? And now I don't know the Laplace transform of this, but I don't I do know the Laplace transform of each individual term. So by taking the inverse Laplace transform, I can obtain Finally, after some time, the solution of the system, which is one third of the step input minus one second over uh, multiplied by epsilon to the minus t, right by the step, plus one sixth or, oops, multiplied by epsilon to the minus three t, g of t. Nice. And I can also very easily plot this solution because let's think about it carefully right as the exercise told us the system starts from zero initial conditions and indeed that is the case if you uh, put uh, in this expression um, time equal to zero you will obtain the zero initial condition uh, actually so you will easily see that pi of zero is zero okay uh, if you do the uh, calculations right here. And now we have three terms, right? The first uh, term is stable, is one over three times the step input. So this term is not going anywhere. The second term is an exponential, so epsilon to the minus t. This goes to zero over time. And this term again goes to zero over time because it's epsilon to the minus three of t. So the solution starts from zero and steadily but surely will end up in the so-called steady state of one over three. All right. And of course, it doesn't perform any oscillation because we don't have uh, sinusoidal terms. So that's it for the step response. You see that no matter how big the differential equation, we always do the exact same thing. Compute, I'm sorry, compute this expression right here and then break it into uh, partial fractions. Okay, no matter how many partial fractions, eventually we are going to know the Laplace transform uh, of each individual term. Okay, that's it uh, for this case. And again, let's combine all of these cases together. So, what happens when we have this differential equation right here? This is a double dot. When you know the system starts from zero, from the one position, I'm sorry, from a, from a derivative of zero, but u is also the step input. As I told you, we discussed this in a previous video. This is actually the complete response of the system. And this is equal to the free response and the forced response. Okay, uh, so the good thing is that here we don't have to solve the system again. We can simply add the solutions that we found earlier. And the solution that we are going to find is going to be uh, the addition of the previous two. And basically, if you remember, uh, let me remind you that the free response was a solution that started from one and went to zero without any oscillation. And the forced response Okay, it was a solution that started from zero and eventually went into one over three, right? Without performing an oscillation. So here we will going to have the combination of the two. So let's say this is one third. Okay, let's write it closer. And let's say this is one. Okay, so the system will start from the position of one and eventually it will move down into one over third and remain there. So this is the combination of these two solutions right here. 
right? And you can easily understand that if you take here the Laplace transform. Considering now that we have non-zero initial conditions, so you are going to end up with s squared ys minus sy0 minus s dot of zero, which is zero, plus four times sys minus y0, plus three times ys is equal to u of s. And now, Let's factor everything together. We are going to obtain this s squared, oh, sorry, plus 4s plus 3 ys is equal to s plus 4 from this term and this term right here, all right, plus u of s. And now if we move this factor down below right here, we are going to obtain this expression. And well, if you think about it, I mean, if you pause the video and go back a little bit, you will see that this is the exact term that I got from the first solution of the system, right? Uh, when uh, where I considered the zero initial conditions. And this exact term is the one that I got from the previous exercise where I got the step response of the system. So obviously, if we combine the two cases, then you see that these terms are the combined terms that appeared earlier, right? which proves the fact that we have a linearity. So the solution right here is going to be the addition of the two previous solutions, okay? So you can move on here and break this into individual fractions and then take the inverse Laplace transform. And the solution you are going to find is going to be actually the addition of the solutions that we found earlier, okay? So that's it for the first case. We're going to give one more example later for the impulse response. Any questions that you have, write them down in the comments and I'll see you in a later video.